This feels so weird. Hey, you guys. Happy Friday. It's about 8.45. I'm actually parked in my car outside of the surgical center where Wesley had his cataract surgery two days ago. Um, gosh, I can't even remember the last time I vlogged. It's weird because every time I pick up the camera, it just feels strange, you know? And I didn't think I was going to get emotional doing a vlog this weekend. But you guys know, um, if you've been here for the last four years, I would say, about halfway through my YouTube extravaganza journey, <laughs> um, you know that I love to use humor um, to cope with situations and I'm the moron that laughs at her own jokes, you know? <laughs> and with everything going on right now, I feel like everyone is so hypersensitive and so easily triggered, myself included, that everything that we could say or do would be under severe scrutiny, um, severe judgment, you know? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna vlog right now because I'm waiting for Wesley's post-op visit but then I'm waiting for, you know, the onslaught of comments of why I'm not under quarantine, why I left my house. And then I feel the compulsion or the necessity to explain to you guys, while all pet or animal emergency services are open, you know, they handle um, all the veterinary care um, in like a to-go or take-out way where, um, you know, the vet techs or assistants come out with masks and gloves. They take your dog from your car. They call you and ask you questions. Then the doctor calls you and like asks you other questions or tells you how your dog's doing. And then if you agree or you don't agree, you pay over the phone and then they bring your dog out to your car. And so there's like no contact that happens. And so it's like, it's this thing where I have to, uh, I, I feel obligated to explain it to you guys. So, you know, I'm coming from a good place. And so anyway, We've been under quarantine since mid-March. Um, my sons were in the middle of spring break, right in the middle of spring break when um, we were told uh, we could do voluntary um, lockdown or uh, quarantine. It was voluntary and it wasn't obligated until maybe two weeks ago. Um, it is just such a time right now, you know, because whether you jump on social media for relief, um, you're overwhelmed with all the updates. Um, whether you turn on the TV, you're overwhelmed with all the updates there or the banners of emergencies or the news of deaths or the new bracket where, um, you know, this pandemic is affecting. Um, I, for one, am insanely overwhelmed at home because, um, you know, all the children are home. All of them are on different curriculums. Um, we're expected to teach our children and also get our work done and also take care of our homes and also provide comfort and relief in this time of uncertainty. And I have work to do. You know, I have to sit down and I have to vlog for you guys. And and I have like my financial planner harassing me saying like, hey, you need to give your pandas normalcy. You have to give them normalcy. Like give them normalcy, give them content. They need content. And I'm like, everything that I can provide in what I'm useful at just seems so vapid right now you know I'm gonna jump on and tell you how to do some makeup or review some makeup or um, do some Amazon recommendations it's like everything feels like it's the wrong answer I'm not putting on makeup I'm not motivated to put on makeup I'm not motivated to shower most days you know I don't have 30 seconds or five seconds to you know, go to the restroom by myself without worrying about uh, Wesley or one of my sons or meeting a deadline, you know, submitting something for school. It just seems like everything that I'm doing, nothing is the right answer, you know? Um, it would feel insincere 
me recommending some favorite Amazon picks when Amazon is backlogged or you know for three to five days or out of stock it would seem insincere for me to talk about products I've been loving lately when I'm not excited to be putting on any products right now since everything is so scary you know when I sat down to film as much as I try to avoid talking about our worldwide pandemic, it all comes back to it. Why I'm tired, why I'm sad, why I'm being resourceful in the kitchen because we ran out of groceries, you know. When I sit down to film, um, there's like mom, 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 mom. I sit down to film, there's, you know, 10 or 12 different alarms going off on my phone because Wesley's on nine different medications right now. And so I think the only reason that I found the strength or the desire to vlog today was because it felt a little bit like I was taking my power back. It's hard to feel like there is a predator out there that's invisible, that you're at risk no matter what you do or where you go or what you touch, whether it's a cart or your face or an Amazon box, you know, it feels really weird or strange. And it's just, it's been a huge blessing that we may not be able to see yet because it's really, reminding us what the core values of being human are, you know, taking care of each other, being present in your relationships, doing things that actually matter and with a hundred percent purpose. And I think if anything, if we take anything out of this horrible experience, it's how much power each of us has and how much strength each of us has. And even on the days where you feel like, gosh, I can't really do this anymore. You know, school and then I have to keep, catch up with work and then I have to have dinner ready before Parker gets home. And then Parker is being called into work, 12 hour shifts, seven days a week, you know, in the front lines of it all. And then they're like, just kidding, no you don't. Oh wait, yes you do, here's a mask. Oh wait, no you don't. Oh wait, here, you may need to shave your beard. Oh wait, just kidding, can you work? you know, double shifts. And so it's, it's proving to us how resilient we are. Despite adversity and so much uncertainty, all we can do is focus on being present and being the best we can with our little nucleus, like our little family. We can show our children how they can grow up in the middle of a pandemic. And we got through it together. You know, we were resourceful and we, in some ways, apologized to our planet <laughs> for how rough we're being on her, you know, and actually ate the snacks that were in the pantry that we thought we didn't like. But guess what? We're not going to be going to the grocery store for a few weeks, so we got to eat what we have, you know, and... I think ultimately it really makes you search into the depths of your core and reminds you what your skills are, what your talent is, what you're so amazingly, incredibly good at. Um, I've actually enjoyed so much being able to teach again. And who would have thought that after... I don't know what, 10 years after that, that I haven't taught that I would be teaching my own children. It's crazy. It almost feels like a really weird gift, <laughs> a really get a really weird gift in a horrible circumstance that I was given, you know, I think for my family and I can only speak for our six is it's given us all really important roles and jobs and it's reminded us how everyone can play a part and really contribute to uh, family flourishing, you know? Um, 
we had a very important conversation uh, with Parker's daughters and I was like listen we all have jobs here we all can contribute here but ultimately we're all gonna get on each other's nerves we are and the reason we are is because we're doing it right we're spending a lot of time together we're playing games together we're talking about each other and our friendships and what we miss and what we need and what we like and you know what's been bothering us and I think that if you're not getting on your family's nerves you're not doing it right <laughs> so ultimately I think out of this despite all the sorrow and sadness and hardship and confusion and frustration and sadness I think I already said that there's a rainbow at the end of all of this. And it's okay to see it one day and not see it for a week. And it's okay to see it for a couple minutes and then the rest of it feel like hell. It's totally fine. No one knows what's gonna happen tomorrow, let alone in the next week or month, you know? And I think ultimately the majority of us like structure and we like boundaries and we like to plan and we like to know what to expect. We like to know what our purpose is. We like to know what our value and where we're supposed to be at what time we're supposed to be there. And right now, nobody's in control. Only one person. And there's a reason why this is happening. And I guess ultimately this long emotional introduction is to let you know that I think this is one situation that paints us all the same color, where we're all in the same place. I don't care if you're a multi-million dollar earning celebrity or you're someone that is struggling. We're all at risk and we're all vulnerable and we're all going to get through this. If this vlog isn't insanely entertaining. Um, I'm doing the best I can <laughs> because I know I've been asked, how's Wesley? How are the boys? What's going on? Let us know you're okay. We need content. And it's like, you guys, when I sit down to give you content, it just feels so gross. I don't know how to explain it. It feels gross. Like I really want to share my ultimate Amazon favorites, but I'm like, Amazon is so backlog right now and it's understandable. And I don't want to be sassy and be like, well, Amazon is slow. They're not giving me 24 hour deliveries. It's like, no, because we're all under quarantine and we're doing what we're supposed to do. And that's why they're backlog. And guess what? They have jobs. And so that's amazing. And I should be thankful. So everything can be so misinterpreted right now that either I'm being insensitive or that I'm not being insensitive or that I'm being lazy or that I'm complaining about my kids because I'm a terrible mother or I'm smothering my kids because I'm a great mother. You know, it's like everything can be morphed into what state of mind we're all under. And right now, no one's state of mind is sunshine bubbles and rainbows, you know? So I feel even more vulnerable right now posting content because I don't want anyone to feel like anything that I say or do is going to compound onto their stress right now. That's the last thing we need. And I know I shouldn't be focusing on that. I should be just focusing on what's going on, but gosh. I have to keep reminding myself that I can only do so much and I can only do the best that I can and I have to do things with good intentions and just hope that they come off that way and if they don't it shouldn't matter to me because I know where my heart was and I think if we can all put ourselves in that frame of mind where you're doing the best you can I'm doing the best we can I'm trying to be judgment less or judgment free you should be judgment free you know focus on your grass I'm gonna focus on mine and if you need me and if we need each other we're there right now is a time where we all got to be humans and we got to be sensitive vulnerable loving unconditional strong adaptable humans and I think we'll come out of this and we'll be like hey do you guys remember when you got you know a three months spring break because of the pandemic and then we can go back to making jokes about it and the last thing I'm gonna say is if you're hoarding toilet paper you're an <laughs> anyway
Anyway, um, I'm waiting for the results on Wesley's pressure. As soon as they bring him back out, I'll show you guys. He'll tell you how he's doing. Um, but we got really exciting plans this weekend because we got lots of stuff to be doing within our four walls of our house. <laughs> Y'all, if you think about it, this whole situation, it's easy to laugh at right now, you know? It's easy to make ourselves feel better and laugh about it because it's almost really hard to believe. It's sad and it's depressing and, and, it, and it's scary and there's so many people, my fiance included, included putting themselves at risk. But ultimately, when we look back in a couple years and think about today and what was going on in March of 2020, we'll think people were hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> they weren't buying fresh produce. They were hoarding toilet paper, pasta, and it was like the craziest flu we've ever seen in our lives. But guess what? We came close together. Our families bonded. We drove each other crazy. We got through it. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. We're going to update you on the status of my cone in the driveway. <laughs> I'm going to update you on Wesley's cataract surgery. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what other trouble we can get into. I know for sure, though. Sunday, my littlest boy turns five and we're throwing him a birthday party. Y'all, when I was wrapping his birthday gifts last week, I started sobbing sobbing so much I had to hide myself in my bedroom because it was weird I, it looked like I was having a nervous breakdown and I was like I just want to give my baby the most normal fifth birthday party ever I sobbed it out I cried it out and then I realized things could be worse He's having a birthday party, and that's all that matters. Plus, he's five, and he won't even remember. <laughs>
Hey, hey, you guys. It's about 8 o'clock. This may or may not be my second check-in of the day. I told y'all this quarantine vlog is going to be kind of lame. Um, I spent the entire morning cleaning my office. I painted my nails red, which is weird because Easter is around the corner. I should be doing all the pastels, but I feel like I kind of overdid it the last couple months. Wesley's post-op appointment was good. Um, we're having a little issue issues a little bit of issues with um some little complications nothing major nothing serious um so we added another drop to his regimen so that brings our total to 10 medications a day um he's on a couple drops four times a day a couple drops three times a day he's on his insulin twice a day he's on his veteral twice a day i feel like I'll, all i'm doing is is administering medication now <laughs> Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me cooking. I was telling uh, one of Parker's daughters, I'm like, you know, I could really easily just film myself cooking every single day because I cook every day. But it's just so much work to set up, take down, set up, take down. And it's so much faster, you know, when you innately do something, you don't naturally think, oh, let me set up the camera. Let me move it. Oh, wait, it's overheating. Now let me stop what I'm doing. Let me pause. Like today... When I was doing the green beans, um, I forgot to show you guys how I boiled them. So that automatically ruins that recipe. Um, but the pork chops are actually this like, um, I think anytime you're breading protein, it's a way of um, maximizing portion size. So um, we had one tenderloin for the four of us and um, the girls basically like grown-ups you know they're adult portions so i had to make a pork tenderloin i think it was maybe a pound and a half um enough for the four of us um so it was a. Uh, I mean it's a pretty it's kind of like a kitchen hack i think if you have a very thin meat or you have a some sort of uh whole protein that you're trying to um, maximize just cover it in saltines and pan fry it um, and thank you later. It's actually a really easy recipe. You could do it with chicken. You could do it. With, you could even do it with steak, believe it or not, with like thinly sliced um, sirloin. It would be like Milanesa. But that's that's been that's been the day. It's just been cleaning, organizing, cooking, taking care of Wesley. He has slept a lot today, which I think is good, um, but he's struggling a lot with opening his eyes. I would show you right now, but he's zonked. And I'm just letting him sleep until 9.30, which is when he gets his last dose of medication. Um, tomorrow is Saturday, and I totally forgot Ernie and Sophia have their comprehensive exams. Um, and it's pretty cool. I think a lot of these um, veterinary facilities are doing really special protocol given the social climate of what's going on. Um, and so a really great way they're doing these appointments is kind of like the way they did it with Wesley today where they come and they take your pet from you and they're all protected. They have their masks on and scrubs and gloves and everything and they take their pet, they take your pet and they check them out. They come out and tell you what's going on or they call you and then they bring them back out. So um, it's really cool that you're still able to um, meet your medical appointments for your pets um, during a time like this, you know, because I've, I mean, I'm, thinking, um, what am I going to do when I run out of their medication? Um, their Wesley is going to be out of two medications by Monday and Chewy is sold out. Um, hopefully I'm hoping that when we have our appointment tomorrow, they have it in stock. If they don't, they can check if a different location has it in stock. Um, because otherwise it's kind of an emergency, you know, we're going to be out of two of his medications and they're not drops for his surgery. They're his regular daily medications. Um, the dope was going to be out of one of his heart medications, which he can't just not take it. He has a heart murmur and, you know, issues with the valve, not closing and all that stuff. So, um, it's just one more thing, you know, one more ball to juggle and to worry about. So hopefully fingers crossed, we can get those refilled tomorrow. Um, otherwise I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, where do you, where do you get vet medications? I guess I could call like local vet clinics and see if they have it in stock. I would assume like those private mom and pop type 
rancher, bring your horse here kind of vet probably has them, but could you imagine going through all the trouble? Or they're gonna be like, hey, do you got the Rona? Cause I don't want you in my vet clinic. <laughs> so anyway, that's one more thing we get to worry about tomorrow. Um, and when we take them to their exam and then Sunday will be my son's fifth little birthday party. So that'll be fun. I got him an ice cream cake and everyone's so excited because like, oh my God, ice cream cake. And what do you expect for like a five-year-old's birthday party, right? You think either chocolate cake, Parker's two daughters, I mean, chocolate on everything. They'll eat a shoe with chocolate on it. And so it's always instant, like no fuss. We just know chocolate cake is a winner. Neither of my boys like chocolate cake. I'm personally not a fan of chocolate cake. I know. Um... And my oldest son really likes the, the sprinkles and the confetti and the rainbow stains your mouth type frosting or the sheet cake from like the grocery store. I really like, I really like grocery store sheet cake. Um, but my littlest son is, is vanilla. He's the like literal vanilla, not boring vanilla. <laughs> We'll take him to an ice cream shop or an ice cream parlor and he orders vanilla. And we were like, hey, do you want it on a cone? Like be a little exciting and put sprinkles on. He's like, nope, just, just vanilla. Take him to like a frozen yogurt place. He gets vanilla. So I, I got him a vanilla cake with vanilla ice cream. Just straight up vanilla. So we look forward to a mediocre cake on Sunday. <laughs> um, but it'll be fun. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's just... I've never wanted to go run errands more in my life. I've never wanted solitude more in my life. You know, like, I think I'm like, do I need to pee again? I feel like I, maybe I need to pee. And I can just go sit in the toilet for like 20 minutes. You know, just, it's that feeling that I never thought I would get where I'm like, I want to go to a crowded mall to be alone. <laughs> to get away from my house, to get away from this, these four walls, or like the medication regimen, or... Um, just everyone being in everybody's way. It's just that feeling, but I'd rather stay home than get sick. <laughs> That's kind of an easy answer. It's such a weird time. Um, I keep seeing a lot of posts of uh, people like, don't be so hard on yourself. Just because you're on quarantine doesn't mean you can't gain 15 pounds. Or just because you're on quarantine doesn't mean you have to wear makeup every day. Or it, I have personally felt triggered or offended by things that mean well. And that's why it's so nerve wracking for me to do this vlog. Because we were talking about doing, um, going to get ice cream. And all of these restaurants, like we're trying to help out. We're trying to contribute to keep things as normal as possible and to help businesses, you know, local businesses thrive despite what's happening. And um, I was, I told Parker, I was like, oh, we can't, I, I, I can't bring my vlog camera. I can't, sh I can't show them that we want to go get ice cream because we're going to get criticized for going to get ice cream, you know? And it's that worry of right now we're under a microscope and I personally, and I'm going to say this up front because I can't be, I can't be pointing the finger and not point it back at myself. I'll see people doing makeup videos and makeup tutorials or hauls. And I'm like, why would I want to learn how to do makeup right now? Like why? And I think if you, if you think about it, if you really think about it, is it really upsetting that someone else is putting on makeup or am I just frustrated that I'm not in a, in a position where I can wear makeup to go out because I can't go out. And so I'm not mad at so-and-so for doing makeup. I think I'm just mad at the entire situation. So no matter, it's like trying to, it's like trying to put a dress on a monkey or something. There's like a saying in Spanish, like you put a dress on a monkey, it's still a monkey. That's kind of right now with the, with the Corona situation. I'm gonna feel better because I put on makeup. It's just gonna feel like a chore. That's not gonna cheer me up. You know what would cheer me up? If Netflix stopped asking me if I was still watching. <laughs> that would cheer me up. And the, you know, here's the thing is I'm not even watching Netflix. It's just having it on because what else are you gonna do? And I get caught up in doing a million other things and then I have to rewind Dexter like four episodes. That's how distracted I get. Clearly I, I need to go run a mile or something. <laughs> And I have to will myself to stay awake for at least one more hour to give Wesley's medication. <sighs> Just want to remind you guys, this is, uh, no one said the quarantine was supposed to be fun. That doesn't mean we can't make it fun by calling it the Rona. 
and I have to stay awake because I'm also doing laundry. Why did I wait so late to do the laundry? Oh, that's right. I remember. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. This is my exciting Friday. If you guys want the recipe for the uh, saltine crusted pork tenderloin, it's really not a recipe. <laughs> you just slice up a tenderloin and crust it with saltines and pan fry it to 145. That's it. But I'll still write it in the description box. You know what? We're so mode apocalypse right now that usually when I bread something, I just straight up bread it in like an egg wash and whatever the breading is. But today I was like, we really can't spare an egg. So I just used one egg and I put a splash of milk and I soaked the tenderloin in it so that it would get nice and sticky and I didn't have to waste the egg. I feel like I need to do a kitchen hack. What to do during the Corona apocalypse. Cover everything in saltines and it makes it delicious. That's it. All right. I said goodbye like seven times. I'm actually leaving you now. It's me and Delirious. And that's it. I love you guys. See you tomorrow. Thank you.